The next routine, the 456 packet trick, is one I debated for a while before I gave it away. In my eyes, this is the perfect closure. You're not going to get anything stronger than this because the spectator doesn't pick a card. He merely thinks of a card and you divine it. This is God's honest truth, the close of all closes. This trick, if it does just half to your routine, what it's done to mine, then you're going to go places with it. It's that good. It's that strong. This is the best trick that I do. Here we go. Shuffle that deck around. I want to turn my head, please. I'm going to turn my back to you. Shuffle them up. And they are shuffled. Cut the deck into four, five, or six packets. I don't want to see it. I don't want to know. Four, five, or six, or my six. choice. Or six. Yep, your choice. Or seven. I don't care. Okay. Pick up any one packet. All right. Fan it in front of you. Think of a card inside that packet. Don't take it out. Don't touch it. Don't stare at it. Don't show no one. Just think of a card in that packet. I'm, think, I'm thinking of one. You think of one. Close that packet now and shuffle it. You're the only one in the world who knows that card, correct? That's correct. What a responsibility. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hold that packet face down in your hand as if you're going to deal into a game. Okay. I want you to count the cards face up onto the table like this. One, two, three, four, silently. Remember the number your card falls on, okay? Go ahead. Just deal them down. Face up. Face up. And remember the number. Don't stop on your card, but remember the number your card falls on. You can do it silently so you don't think I'm trying to count. Well, card doesn't make a difference. Okay. Turn that packet face down so I can't see anything. Fair enough. Reassemble those four, five, six, or seven packets together in any order you want. Put your packet on top of one, put one on top of those two, and just put them back together again. All right. Now give the deck a regular cut and complete the cut so you don't think I'm using key cards or anything. All these cards are... Cut and complete it. Square it up and just hand it to me. Can I turn around now? Please. Is that fair? That's very fair. Right now, this is what most magicians would call test conditions. All right. It really is, right? Even if the cards were marked, it wouldn't matter because you just something would simply think of that card. That's correct. At this point, magicians would fish for your card. And this is what I mean by fishing. They would say something like, you picked a cherry colored card. You would say, no. And I'd say, never heard of black cherry? It's a joke, but I got <laughs> the color out of you. Then I would say, you picked an odd number card, an odd card. Sure. And then you would say, no. And I would say, I think it's very odd you picked an even number. A little play on words again, a little gag. But now I know your card is an even black card. And then I could fish that way for it, OK? All right. Or a magician would have to use an out. For instance, when you counted down, what number did your card fall on? Three. Three. If it's the third card, I can count three. If it's the fourth card, one, two, three, the next one. If it's the fifth card, I can go T-H-R-E-E. -E. Sure. Any if it's kind the sixth one, yeah, I can just look for a bunch of outs. But watch this. I'm going to take this deck, give it legitimate shuffles. Okay? All right. You can watch. I'll do it real slow for you. I'm going to take one card out of this deck. You're going to name your card. And that's your card. Would that be a great trick? That'd be impossible. If I went like that, and I'm committed. For the first time, name your card that you just thought of. King of Hearts. Turn it over, please. Oh. Oh, oh. Okay. That's the four, five, six packet trick.